this is a dynamic enforcer. I picked this up just a couple days ago. I thought it'd be perfect for this build. The previous owner, they bought it new and then they drove it for a year and they had problems with it. And so they parked it and it sat in the garage for a year. So it's two years old, hardly even used. And I'll tell you what the problem was. Right there, lead acid batteries. What happened? Is batteries ran out of water and it destroyed the batteries so one year of use on these uh, if this was lithium this cart would still be going just fine they would have had no problems because you don't have to add water zero maintenance on the lithium put it in drive when I got it it had like two volts on a 48 volt battery pack some of these batteries it actually flipped polarities your positive was reading negative and your negative was reading positive that's how bad a shape these were in well first obviously i fill them all up with water but in order to get some power in them i had to hook this on to boost them up a little bit your battery chargers at that voltage are not even going to read your batteries as far as they're concerned your batteries don't exist so you got to boost your power up a little bit so i put this on this is 20 volts so I'd put it across two batteries, get two batteries boosted up a little bit, other two. It took me a while to actually get this going. But this, handy as heck, I jump start my car all the time with this. Once I got them actually charging up enough that they recognize it, I put this across, this has 12 and 24 volts, and so I put across three of the batteries, 24 volts, pulse charged them overnight. I was able to do those three overnight. These ones only did for a few hours. I was able to get it charged enough. I actually drove about a hundred feet over to where I'm going to work on it. Same price for these or a lithium battery within a few hundred bucks. Lead acid's gone up in price. Lithium has come down in price. You're not going to even see lead acid in golf carts anymore in a few years. I don't know why they're putting them in now. Really don't. So I got to pull this seat off and then we're going to pull these batteries out. This is one of my favorite tools here. These seem to be pretty clean which is surprising to me. All right, I'm not sure what, what the deal is with those. Might need a pry bar. There you go, I just gotta get underneath them. Time to start plucking these out. So these are an eight volt, 170 amp hour at 20 hours of discharge. The thing about lead acid, the power comes out so slow that the longer you go with a discharge, the more you can get out of it. That's the most you can get. 145 amp hours is what you're gonna get if you discharge them in five hours. Essentially, we are replacing 145 amp hours with 100 amp hours unfortunately i can't test it because these are so bad we won't know what it was like before we're only going to know what it's like with the le lithium batteries <laughs> held in there with all that dirt yeah how cool would that be if it fit in there right just right well let's go get the battery in Get an idea how it fits. We're weighing the lead acids now. Here we go. 66 pounds. So you've got, that's some weight. 106.5. So, we'll take 66 times six. So that's 396 pounds of lead acid on there, almost 400 pounds. So basically 290 pounds lighter. So you could put two of these in here and still be 190, almost 200 pounds lighter with two of these in here than, than those. And you got way more capacity.
that's another big reason to go with lithium is weight. So much lighter for your amp hours. All right, I'm gonna drop this in, see how it fits. Okay, so look at this closer with this battery. There's not quite enough room in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna just pull out this whole battery tray here. It's simple enough. Four bolts, two there, and two up there. I'm gonna probably do some cutting and welding on it and stuff like that, and put it back in. And this will be a nice fit. Look how much room is in here. You could get two of these in here pretty easy. You just have to change this bracket a little bit more, make it just a little bit wider. Probably take those and change them a little bit. I only have one of these, so I'm gonna just put one in. I really like these, how they're spring loaded, see that? They're not gonna just be sitting there bouncing, making noise as you go. But I'm gonna put it in there, it fits. Like so. So I've gotta cut this out and just move it forward and weld it back up. So I'll get to cutting after I bandage my finger. For some reason I can't do anything without ripping a hole in one of my knuckles. All right, we'll get to grinding now. Of course, I've got a Dewalt grinder. Cutting and hitting until something starts coming loose a little bit. Easy. These came off really easy with the cut off wheel. I just cut into these, these popped right off. Got these straightened out. I just gotta clean up, do some more cleanup on some of these welds, broken welds on on there. But it's getting too dark for the camera for tonight. So we'll come back tomorrow and weld these all up and drop that battery in. So all right. That's it for tonight. We're back at it. I've got my 3000 watt inverter plugged into my 48 volt auxiliary out on the club car. Over to the welder. Turn the welder on. If I beat these with a hammer, got them back flat. It's gonna be just nice and perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back on as well because I think I'm gonna put like a piece of plywood or something in here. It gives me the options of having another little box or something. I'm gonna do a little cleanup with the grinder. I'm gonna paint it and drop that bad boy in there. I wanna mount this right here. I think that's gonna be nice. Seems like the best place. You can see it good from where you're driving. Anywhere else is just in the way. You know, some people, they put them here, but I guess we could put it in there and you open the glove box and look at it. But nope, we're putting it right there. So we're gonna drill a hole. We don't wanna drill through this because this is gonna wiggle around a bit. It'll be behind that. So I guess we go over the top of that. Well, I'm thinking right here. Okay, I punch right through the one there. There's the main frame right to the side there. So that's actually a pretty good spot to come through. Yeah, there we go. Got my cable. Okay, we're going to run this over here, down along the frame and up into the battery box. Yeah, liking that. All right, moment of truth, plug it in. It's in. So I found out the battery doesn't actually have to be on. This will still read the, the battery dual with it off. So. There you go, 48%. I just could get some screws and mount that. Okay, so I've got some number six self-tapping hex screws. I think will be just the ticket. Nice. I think I like that. 
I'm just gonna run this back along the frame. I'll just zip tie this on, I'll show you after it's on. Okay, so right here, I've got, I put some of that black silicone gasket maker right there where the hole is so that that'll set up and then we won't have the sharp edges cutting on it. And then it comes right along here, up to everything, coming down along and up through there, up through here. Cable poked right there, so. Probably just you know wind it up to the battery. Time for the bracket. Okay, we've got the battery bracket mounted back in here, all bolted down. Just gotta drop the battery in there. There we go. It's like negative. Okay, I've got to hook up the charger at the same time. That's for the charger. Now we've got brown for positive and blue for negative. I'm not going to actually mount the charger in here and the reason why is because I'm going to put solar panels on here and I'm not going to need the charger but I am going to need to charge it with the charger until the solar panels go on but I'm just going to have this hooked up and I'll just plug it in and charge it okay positive hooked up put this cover over it battery monitor okay that should be good to go 48% let's Power it up. Battery's on. That's on. Key's on. There you go. All right, well, I'm going to clean up the tools real quick and we'll take it for a little bit of a spin. Moment of truth. It looks like the battery monitor turns itself off after a while. Anchors work. Ooh, we have movement. It's actually works. We just got done with our distance test. It was amazing. This battery just went and went and went. We hit zero percent and we kept going. We went 25 miles. I think it was closer to 26. I'm very confident that you'd get close to 50 on flat ground. We was up mountains, down mountains, climbing all over the wilderness. It was just phenomenal. If you wanna watch the videos, we have a video of the install of the solar panel. You can watch that. And we also have the drive test, full video of driving out on the desert. It's pretty awesome. So you wanna probably click on that as well.